in the name of personal injury law. Today we're going to talk about the realities police officers face with respect to their rights when they're injured on the job and in their patrol car. I have with me Steve Sinus, a partner at the Sinus Dramas Law Firm, and he brought with him a very special guest. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm honored to have Bob Stump with me. Bob's a client of mine. Uh, he's here to tell his story about his severe injuries that he sustained in a motor vehicle crash in January of 2020 when he was working for the DeWitt uh, Township Police Department. Bob, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Bob, can you tell us what happened the day of the crash? Sure. Um, on January 15th, I was working patrol when a neighboring agency requested for assistance uh, for a fleeing and elude vehicle that they were chasing that wouldn't stop for them. Um, after getting to the location that I picked out to uh, assist with stop six to flatten the tire of the fleeing vehicle, um, uh, she came over the hill on her side of the road and um, just within seconds, she was on my side and hit me head on intentionally. That's horrifying. Can you tell us a little bit about the injuries and the medical treatment you went through? Yeah, so um, I don't remember a whole lot that after the accident, right after the accident, but um, I did unbuckle right before uh, she hit me to get out of my car and my knee hit the dash on impact and shoved my uh, hip or hip socket, broke out on the backside. It's called your acetabulum, I believe. And uh, so that was my major injury. Um, I have back pain and then um, I, I received a severe concussion, which still deal with a little bit of that today, but um, mainly my, uh, my hip and my back issues. You need to have surgery, don't you? Yeah, in about a month I get a total hip replace. So, Steve, can you tell us about the unique legal issues that someone like Bob faces when he's injured in a patrol vehicle as a police officer? Yeah, so uh, we may not think of uh, police officers having, as having a unique set of rights if they're injured in a car crash, uh, but in many ways they do. Uh, first of all, they're in the course of their employment, so they're entitled to workers' comp. Uh, they also have rights under the Michigan No-Fault Law, so they have to pursue their rights under both systems to pursue coverage for their medical expenses lost wages. Bob said to do that. Uh, sometimes uh, the two systems are kind of complicated to deal with and some issues have arose here and there that we've worked out for Bob uh, on those fronts. Um, and then with regard to uh, his rights against the at-fault driver, it is true that a police officer can bring a civil claim against the at-fault driver. But like all of us, when a police officer pursues that claim, the reality of what they can recover is usually limited by the insurance coverage that's available on that driver's policy. And in Bob's situation, unfortunately, this driver who was driving with such reckless abandon also didn't have too much insurance. And Bob's injuries are the type of injury that when you look at the past, present, and future damages he's going to sustain. And in my line of work, it's the type of injury that is worth, worth several hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not, you know, more than that. Unfortunately, she only had about a $50,000 policy. And so the next question for anybody in that situation is, do you have underinsured motorist coverage available? And with the police department, they do have that, or did have that for Bob, but it was only an additional 50. So I then had to tell Bob the bad news that in theory, he has a right, and if you compare it to other cases in this in, in, in this field, his, his, his case is worth so much more than we can recover for him. And so it was limited to the hundred of coverage. And what it really brought to light for me is that we have people out there working in our police departments, risking their lives in their patrol vehicles, and their underinsured motorist coverage could be increased pretty easily, or it's not that you know, it's not the coverage that. held by the police department. Right, right, right. And underinsured coverage can be increased without too much of an increase in the premium. And if they did that for police officers uh, and increased their coverage, they would be further protecting them. And unfortunately, Bob didn't get that kind of protection. He's got a very limited amount of money that can be pursued when this person has permanently damaged his life. So, Bob, what are your thoughts about the limited coverage that you've experienced and what maybe, can you tell us what other police officers should be aware of? What would you want them to know? 
Sure. I was uh, shocked when I found out how little coverage my department had, um, thinking if I am even to return to work, you know, that's my concern for my family and providing for them. Um, so after talking to other officers, they were shocked when they found out how little coverage that we had as well. What should police officers in Michigan, Steve, understand if they are injured in their patrol vehicles? If that happens, uh, they need to understand their rights at the outset. They gotta, they gotta understand what they have to do with workers' comp. They have to understand what they have to do with Michigan no-fault insurance. They then have to look at their rights against at-fault parties that uh, somehow contributed to the crash. Um, perhaps sometimes in police situations, you have multiple vehicles that could be to blame. So just like any situation, a, a very extensive investigation may be warranted. And then you got to investigate the insurance coverages that are there for any type of liability claim. So when a police officer is injured, uh, they are going to look at the liability insurance policies of the defendants. And then they perhaps could access policy, uh, their own policy, uh, and, and they're under insured coverage to their own policy if that kind of coverage is available under their policy. Uh, it can be the case that because they're operating another vehicle that's not insured under their personal policy, there's not going to be underinsured coverage under their personal policy, which then leaves them with their coverage under the policy that their department bought. And so I would advise police officers to ask their departments to explain to them how much underinsured coverage do they have. And I think that, unfortunately, across the state of Michigan, there's probably not too much coverage that uh, police departments are buying for their patrol vehicles. And I'm, I'm guessing it's just because people haven't asked the questions and they haven't really thought it, thought it through and haven't really consulted with an attorney like yourself to understand what they should be doing to protect their officers. Right. And that's why we brought Bob on here today. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not to, you know... Um, blame anybody in particular. It's it's to bring awareness to the fact that we have people risking their lives in patrol vehicles and their insurance coverage could be increased to give them much better protection and it's just not happening. And Bob has now had to live through that reality, unfortunately. And what about the fact that the accident, you know, has made it difficult for, for Bob to work? He was off work for a good period of time. Is that covered under the, the stations or the, the um, townships? policy? He has coverage for his lost wages through workers' comp, um, but there are some uh, complicated aspects to that okay. at times. And so thankfully does have that coverage. But what we're talking about is a right that um, is for compensation for the loss of quality of life right. for the rest of his life. Right. And it's the type of claim that juries, when they hear, realize how valuable they, those claims are. Mm -hmm. And so Bob could go before a jury and get a big award. But the problem is, is that the coverage isn't just going to be there. there. There's nothing there yeah. to recover. And that's that's, that's really what we're sad. trying to bring awareness yeah. about. And, you know, these insurance buying decisions police departments have, uh, they can they can do it, do it differently and they can increase the coverage. So hopefully they do. So if you're a, a police officer in the state of Michigan, you should be asking your department what the coverage is so you know that you're, you, you and your family are protected, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Bob, thanks a lot for being here. Yeah, thanks thank for you, Bob. Me. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. In the Name of Personal Injury Law is brought to you by the Sinus Dreamus Law Firm.